In the De Ostra, or, Anthem of the Stars. A melon de San Gele. It's too long, Melene, remained on earth in the human prison, which the spirit encloses us, holding him numb with a peaceful sleep we must release him, and send him to the heavens. It pleases me in living to see the clouds before me, and to press with my steps the hoary shoulders of Atlas the sky-bearer, it pleases me to run to the firmament, and to open them. If I am thus permitted, of the admirable stars, and sing their gaze of our guilty destinies. To make a present for you Meline, child of heaven, Meline, who took your name from the sweetness of honey that in the cradle you ate, when in place of nurse the be pot of thin and melissa. Also I would do harm to my verses, and to myself, if I dedicated them to anyone other than you, who knows the course of heaven, and knows the powers of the stars of which I speak, and their influences. From the beginning, if we must believe it that way, the Estoils had no destiny in mind, and did not yet have this whole wide world, as they have today, neither the care nor the charge. Without them all they blaze for a beautiful ornament, scattered, without virtue, throughout the firmament. When the sun hurt from the Indies the barriers leaving the ocean, the hours its gates ran a little in front of its luminous torch gathered by the sky of the stars the herd, who led the dance, and contained them by number, as well as the shepherds, who, in the morning, under the shade of an oak tree, go to tell their sheep and their oxen, as well as lead them to graze on the grassy banks. When the moon showed its venerable horn, the hours of Reachef opened the great stable, where the stars lodged in rest all day, bringing them back from the sky all around, then closed them by account at the usual hour that the sun had our earth lit. If in the end a strange misfortune, a misfortune can be useful. Put their flame in value, the night that the gents, with all difficulty, buried Pelion above Osa, and on Osa planted the cloudy Olympus, in order to uphold Jupiter from his reign, and vanquished him. The stars, from this evening, took strength and power, and forever in heaven firm place held. Already these great Geans by climbing against the mountain, from circumstantial Olympus had gained the front, and I held heaven. And the son of Saturn, had been imprisoned in the nocturnal charter of the abyss of hell, where he holds Titan with hands, and with feet, the Titans would be imprisoned. Without Aster, who since then had the nickname of the bear, who then watched all alone the race of the others who were dancing, and if not dancing, having, as I was tired, stopped her beautiful firm steps towards Boreas, and there, seeing the ambush that the giants are brewing, Suddenly she hoaxes the troop of her sisters, and goes to recite laying the ambush for Father Jupiter. Arm yourself, said Lesto Eel. Arm yourself, keep your weapons, arm yourself, arm yourself. I don't know which gendarmes wanted to pile up three greats one on top of the other to conquer heaven, and to drive you out of it. Therefore Jupiter, with a start, commands, having his goat's skin, the celestial band to put on harness, to guard their house, and their hands to wear irons in the prison. Already the odious skirmish was taking place, when the flaming stars the radiant troop to dazzle the sight of the furious gents, came to stand straight in front of their eyes, and then Jupiter with the line of his storm to the blind gents burst into flames the head, making them distill the mood of their brains through the eyes, through the mouth, and through the two nostrils, like a soft cheese, which overhangs drips through the holes of a basket, onto the ground drop by drop. During the divine stars, for their trouble in having done their duty so well towards his majesty, the quarry stopped, and all in such a place that they had fortune, and in such a space, with a magnetic link their plants attached, and like great gentlemen in heaven stuck them, like a marshal who out of the furnace pulls nails in the woods, all radiate with embers, that with great blows of hammers he knocks hard around the wheel are set cleanly. Then he put in their hands the thread of the destiny and gave them power over all things born, and that by their aspect fatalized would be all that which nature in this world would do. Retaining however the superintendence to themselves of their gaze, and of their influence, and that, when he wanted, everything they had done would have no authority, no force, no effect. The Estoils therefore alone made themselves ladies over all human bodies, and not over souls, 
taking the opportunity in their service, in order to execute there the order of their destiny. Since then, all the birds that fly and sing, all the silent fish that frequent the waves, and all the animals whether of the fields, or of the woods, or of the cavernous mountains, were surf by their laws. But man, above all, had his life subject to the destinies that heaven through the stars cast upon him, the man, who was the first to understand them, dared to understand them, and such names as he wanted in heaven composed them. One devotes himself to war, and lives only on prey, and seeks to die before the walls of Troy, having pierced the heart with Hector's spear, the other becomes Typhus, and wants to lead the hero see the phase, and return without fear from the Cyanian rocks the constrained mouth, and knows how to predict two or three days ahead, bent over the deck, the storm and the wind. One was born a plowman, and despite the fact that he spurs his oxen, and splits many a plow with the sharp plowshare of the Geres to sow there the gifts of mother seers. The other was born a wine grower, and in a straight line above the stony mountains plants the noble vine, or prunes the old vines, or spades the vines or returns the married Pravan to the escalates. One fishes by constraint. So Estoel's reigns on you. And leading his oars and sails on the water, drags his mesh net, and dares to arm his arm well, to knock out the monsters of the sea. Sometimes he dives, and without drawing breath spies on the tritons to the depths of the arena, sometimes he sets out his deer hooks, and on the banks heals their fish from the rivers. The other becomes a hunter, and in his courage loses the care of his children, and of his entire household, to run through the woods after some wild boar, or to play wolves to the strangling mastiffs, and languishes if he does not attach at his door the heads, and the various skins of a thousand strange beasts. One goes under the earth, and searches for the metals of gold, silver, and iron, the seed of evils, which nature had not, as a mother's treasure. For our great benefit. Wanted to bring to light. Then becomes an alchemist, and multiplies in vain the easy gold, which so soon flies from his hand. The other walks his shuttle by trade, or combs the fleeces of coarse wool, and says that he is the infant of Arachne. One is an engraver, goldsmith, carver, and mason, trader, lapidary, and mercer, who goes looking for goods, at his peril, in some strange land. To others you give much better professions, and do not make them marshals, nor tailors, but great philosophers, who through long studies have made a certain art of your uncertainties. To whom you have given the power to listen to your divine mysteries, for us tell. This guy knows the language of many birds, and knows how to conjecture omens from dreams, he tells us about our lives, and with obscure words, to those who question him, he announces the future. Sesti from birth is made sacred poet, and never under his fingers his lyre is mute, unless he always sings with a melodious verse the excellent hymns of men, and of the gods, as you, Melene, adorned with so many graces, which in this kind art are the best said to be surpassed. Sesti is more ardent, and with a more haughty heart guides a colony in a distant country, and there is neither torrent nor mountain which holds him back. Now he raised an ancient city, now he built a new one of his name, and only wants to amass treasure, only of fame. This one acts bravely, and dares to make himself believe that the height of heaven hurts him with his glory, almost adored by the people, and does not want to endure that another of his comes to measure his credit. But he sees in reality end his audacity cut off, and dies poor and fugitive like another Pompey. Seti, like a Caesar after having crushed the empire under his feet, is in the end killed by his people, and cannot escape the certain destiny, which at birth you gave him. Without more you cause us our goods and our misfortunes, but you also cause our various moods, you make us sardonic, calm, angry, stale, impatient, courtiers, solitary, sad, pleasant, kind, bold, cold, proud, eloquent, ignorant, simple, and cunning. What more will I say about you? By your marked boundaries the sun recrosses its revoked courses, and recreates for us the months, the years, and the seasons, according to whether it enters or leaves your beautiful houses, under your power the great cities are secured. 
you give us the quivering signs of times, and whether you lie down, or whether you rise, in various ways the signs you have printed on the front, of winds and storms of rain, frost, hail, and snow, and according to the colors that paint your torches, we know if the days will be either ugly or beautiful. You also give us by your celestial marks the certain omens of fevers and plagues and of evils, which very soon must fall there, the signs of famine, and of future battles. For you are the sacred characters of God, so let us know this great God faithful secretaries, through whom his will makes humans know, as if he marked us on a paper with his hands. Not only by you does this great Lord and Master give his will to men to be known, but by the wave and by the air and by the fire quickly, even. Who will believe it? By the lines which are written in our hands, and on our face, which ones could really know the use of, we would see clearly printed therein together our bad and our good accidents. But for lack of being able to hear such lines which are proper to us, we cannot understand what God has written, and without ever foreseeing our future misfortune, we always let ourselves fall after one misery, into another misery. But certainly above all in you the will of God shines clearer, especially since his greatness lights more closely your beautiful splendor. Oh that far from reason he wanders madly, who says that you graze on the humors of the earth. If your mood worsens, you become corrupted, and therefore, divine stars, you are not satisfied, your fire nourishes you, like a fountain which the more it flows, the more the plain overflows, as if it had its own water the perennial sun. Thus, having in you the eternal sun of a native fire, you never need the light, which shines in you, as in the sun. First, how could the earth in its bosom always provide enough humor to entertain you when the least of you in size surpasses it? How would the mood of this low earth reach you up there, without seeing itself dried up by the rays of the sun, before it touches you? Mad is still the one, who mortal eyes you think to be, to die when we die, and when we are born, to be born, and that the most brilliant to the kings are destined, and the less flamboyant to the poor assigned. Such care does not hold you, because after our births that you have poured into us your powers, no longer care about us, nor our facts too. So run in rest, deliver from worry, and free from the passions, which from the cradle follow the men who down their charge barely live. I salute you, children of the first night, happy divine stars, by whom everything is guided. While you are performing your ordained dance in heaven, I will fulfill, there, the destiny that you are pleased to pour out to me, good or bad, while my immortal soul entered my body. End.